Good day. I'm Kerry Dillinger, and this is Bible Class Topics. We want to look at man's duty and destiny in this lesson, which is a topical study, and we want to talk about Romans 6, verses 1 through 6, to get us started. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. In order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. Satan wants us ignorant. He wants us ignorant because living a Christian life depends on us learning how to live a Christian life. Notice what our text says about the effects of sin. It says that when we are under sin, we become enslaved to sin. Human beings are prone to judge by sentiment and feeling. And there's a misleading standard if there ever was one. We have to be willing to seek out the truth. We need to know the truth. It's the truth that will set us free. Not our sentiment, not our feelings. If you'd like to study more on Romans 6, verses 1 through 6, we have an entire playlist of studies from that book, from the book of Romans. I'll put a link to that in the description below, and also I'll try to put a link to it in the end card of this video. In this lesson, we want to talk about two things, principles of divine judgment and the Godhood's appeal to man. Let's start with Isaiah 55, 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Lord God told this to Isaiah. Let's talk about what divine judgment is not. It is not God throwing his weight around. God does not punish men just because he can, just because he has the power, just because he's omnipotent, omniscient, etc. John 7, 24, Jesus said, do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. That's the kind of judgment we should be looking for, not judgment by appearances. God won't judge by appearances. He will judge by what is right. So we've already started to answer the second question. What is divine judgment? Well, divine judgment boils down to this. We reap as we sow. God knows our hearts. He knows the thoughts and intents of our hearts. He knows what's in our mind. He is the one and only true judge. Will our neighbors judge us? Perhaps. Will the church judge us? Perhaps. Will our family judge us? Our friends? Perhaps. But only the judgment of the divine Godhood will mean anything in the long haul. Galatians 6, 7. Paul told the Galatians, Do not be de deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. We recently posted a lesson on sowing and reaping to this channel. I'll try to put a link to it in the end card of this video. Let's 
Let's talk about how and when final judgment will be administered for just a moment, and we'll leave it to Jesus to tell us. Matthew 25, 31 through 46, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him, <coughs> I beg your pardon, before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will set separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will place the sheep on his right but the goats on his left then the king will say to those on the right come you who are blessed by my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you welcomed me I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them truly. I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. They will also answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The lost, then, are not sent arbitrarily into eternal punishment. They're sent there according to their own free will. They chose to disobey God, and then, in eternity, they have chosen to pay the consequences. 2 Corinthians 5.10, Paul says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or whether evil. Let's talk about the Godhood's appeal to man. We'll begin with John 3.16, perhaps the best known verse in the New Testament. We'll continue reading down through verse 21. I'm reading from the ESV in this lesson today. Perhaps you should have your Bibles out and read along with me in whatever version you prefer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may clearly be seen that his works have been carried out in God. The Godhood appeals to us then, first, through God the Father. In Isaiah 45, 20 and 22, Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me. A righteous God and a Savior, there is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved. All the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Then in the New Testament, the Apostle Peter in his second letter, 
Chapter 3, verse 9, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. This is the appeal to man from God the Father. He doesn't wish that any of us will perish, but he wishes that all of us should reach repentance. What about the appeal through God the Son? Matthew 9, 13. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Then in John's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 39 and 40, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. The appeal from God the Son is that we have to come to Him if we want eternal life. He came to call sinners, not the righteous. Well, who are the sinners? We are all the sinners. We all have to answer the gospel call of Jesus Christ. The Godhood's appeal to man has come through God the Father. It has come through God the Son. It's come through God the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, verses 7 through 11, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. This is Jesus speaking to the apostles. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. And the Helper is the Holy Spirit. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. In Revelation 22, verse 17, the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the ones who hear say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life without price. The Holy Spirit is the one that has given the word of God to the apostles and to the New Testament writers. And through that word of God, he appeals to us to come to Christ. It is is that word that will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. It is that word that will divide the sheep from the goats. The goats will be divided because they do not believe in Jesus Christ. So, the Godhood's appeal to man comes through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They all want us to come where? To Christ. Let's make a few final comments, and the lesson will be over. Each of us is responsible before God for our own lives. Nobody will go to heaven or hell on someone else's coattails. It will be all up to us. In Ezekiel, the third chapter, verses 16 through 21, And at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. Again, if a righteous person turns from his righteousness and commits injustice, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you have not warned him, he shall die for his sin and his righteous deeds that he has done shall not be remembered, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the righteous person not to sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he took your warning. 
and you will have delivered your soul. So we say that each of us is responsible before God for our own lives. But as we see, Ezekiel was commanded to tell what he knew about God. Each of us as Christians, followers of Christ, are commanded to tell what we know. We know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, and we need to spread that word. Anybody who knows us personally, anybody who knows us via this channel, knows that that is what we teach. We teach that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, and it's through obedience to him that we can choose to be his people. Romans 14 verses 10 through 12. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Each of us fixes our own destiny then come the good times or come the bad times. The Godhood declares all things are ready. Romans chapter 5 verses 8 through 11. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We hear and respond to the Godhood's will. We either respond in obedience or we respond in disobedience. From the psalm, Psalm 2, 12. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. John 8, 31, and then we'll skip to verses 34 through 36. Jesus said, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son, that is Jesus, sets you free, you will be free indeed. I pray that this lesson has been helpful to you in your Bible study. I thank you so much for coming and studying with me today. The channel continues to grow, and I appreciate everyone who is helping me make that happen. For those of you that have come to the channel for the first time today, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. All those things are very helpful to the channel. Let's keep each other in our prayers. It's the 4th of September, 2021, for those of you watching this in the future. And the world is still fighting the pandemic of COVID-19. Let's all go about our daily walk in wisdom. Let's don't take any unnecessary chances. God protects those who protect themselves. We can't be foolhardy and expect God to bail us out of our situations here on this earth life. I'll pray for you, you pray for me, till we come together to study soon, Lord willing. May God bless.